During Starship Flight 11, SpaceX deliberately flew Ship 38 without metallic heat shield tiles, exposing parts of its stainless steel hull directly to plasma temperatures over 15,000 Kelvin. After landing, engineers discovered oxidation marks similar to earlier tests, despite no metal tiles being used. This unexpected result revealed critical data about Starship's new thermal protection system and left the entire aerospace industry stunned. Let's dive right in. When SpaceX released the post-flight photos of Starship 38, the reaction across the aerospace world was immediate. Engineers, analysts, and even critics stopped scrolling. The world's largest stainless steel rocket had returned safely from space, but its silver hull was streaked with rust-colored lines. And here's the twist that stunned everyone. There were no metallic heat shield tiles installed. So how could rust appear when there was no metal plating to oxidize? The answer is both surprising and deeply revealing, a glimpse into how SpaceX learns faster than anyone else. Starship Flight 11 wasn't a mistake. It was a deliberate experiment. SpaceX engineers intentionally removed several heat shield tiles from Ship 38 before launch. Some areas were left fully exposed, revealing the stainless steel skin directly to atmospheric re-entry. This wasn't carelessness. It was a calculated risk designed to push the rocket's thermal protection system to its absolute limits. During descent, the spacecraft faced plasma temperatures exceeding 15,000 Kelvin, enough to melt most metals. Yet Starship held together beautifully. The streaks that appeared afterward weren't signs of failure, but evidence of resilience. Each one told a story about how stainless steel behaved under real hypersonic conditions, and the data SpaceX gained from this one flight could reshape how future rockets are built. Many people wonder, why not use carbon fiber, titanium, or some futuristic alloy? Because none of them can do what 304L stainless steel does at SpaceX's scale. Here's the truth. Titanium softens and loses strength above 600 degrees Celsius. Carbon composites, while lightweight, can't survive repeated plasma exposure but 304L stainless steel can endure up to 1,000 degrees Celsius while maintaining structural strength and resisting corrosion. Even when plasma licks the hull, the material forms a thin chromium oxide layer. The same brown film everyone mistook for rust. It's not destruction, it's self-preservation. That layer actually protects the hull from deeper corrosion, proving that SpaceX's design choice wasn't just smart, it was visionary. And here's the beauty of it. When the heat fades, the layer stabilizes. The steel remains intact. The rocket survives. And SpaceX gains priceless real-world data about how its materials behave at the edge of physics. To understand how all this ties together, you have to look at where the magic starts. SpaceX's ceramic tile factory at Starbase, Texas. Each Starship tile begins as a mixture of silica powder and bonding agents. Shaped like dough, baked at high temperatures, and coated with a black thermal glaze. It's a two-stage process. Bake, coat, bake again. Not unlike a pizza, as Elon Musk once joked, at full capacity, the factory can produce 7,000 tiles per day, enough to cover an entire starship, roughly 18,000 tiles, in under three days. That's faster than any aerospace manufacturer on Earth. But here's where it gets bold. Instead of covering every inch, SpaceX is learning how few tiles they can safely get away with. Every missing tile means less weight, less maintenance, faster turnaround. Flight 11's partial tile setup wasn't negligence. It was a stress test to define the true threshold between safety and efficiency. And the rust marks were the visual proof that even the bare steel could survive where traditional materials would fail. As Ship 38 plunged back through the atmosphere, it transformed into a spectacle of science and art. Friction ignited the air around it, forming plasma, a glowing cocoon of superheated gas. To the naked eye, it looked like the rocket was on fire. But every color in that plasma meant something. At around 10,000 to 15,000 Kelvin, nitrogen and oxygen ionized, creating bright yellows and reds. Those glowing trails were not chaos. They were data streams in motion. Temperature gradients, pressure shifts, velocity decay. Ship 38 SAS sensors captured it all, 
proving that even with partial shielding, the hull's thermal response matched predictions. When the colors shifted from white yellow to deep pink, it signaled that the most dangerous heating phase was over and that SpaceX's modeling had been spot on. In the end, the vehicle splashed down with near-perfect stability. No uncontrolled spin, no hull breach, no meltdown, just precision and proof. After the flight, Elon Musk broke the silence on X. Ship 38 returned from space at hypersonic speed. We intentionally stressed the heat shield to its limit. He didn't frame it as a success or failure, just data. This is how SpaceX operates. Instead of predicting on paper, they test in fire. Every scorch mark on Ship 38 became a data point. Every patch of oxidation, a clue for engineers refining the next iteration. This pragmatic approach, fail fast, learn faster, is exactly why SpaceX keeps leaping ahead while others analyze from the sidelines. They treat every flight not as a product demo, but as a live experiment. When engineers around the world saw the footage, many were speechless. No one expected a stainless steel rocket to survive that kind of plasma exposure without full heat shield coverage. NASA engineers called their results beyond simulation. European aerospace experts admitted they'd underestimated SpaceX's thermal design approach. What SpaceX proved is simple but revolutionary. You don't have to make rockets immune to heat. You just need to make them strong enough to live with it. That shift in mindset, from fear to mastery, is what truly stunned the industry. While the world debated what the rust meant, SpaceX was already two steps ahead. Just hours before Flight 11's launch, a massive new section rolled out of the Starbase factory, the nose cone of Ship 39, the first Starship version 3. Observers noticed several key upgrades immediately. A new generation of glossier, more heat-resistant ceramic tiles. Improved bonding structure between tile and steel hull. Reinforced insulation panels under the tiles to distribute heat evenly. But the real shock came from the two small tubes near the payload door. They weren't decoration. They were the first visible signs of SpaceX's orbital refueling system. The missing piece in Musk's Mars vision. Here's how it works. Two starships connect nose-to-nose -nose in orbit. Vacuum-insulated pipes transfer super-cold liquid methane and oxygen between them. Around 100 to 200 kilograms per second. The process lasts under an hour, with just 1 to 2 percent fuel loss. This system will enable deep space missions, refueling one starship to send it farther than ever before. And it all begins with learning how to make starships survive multiple re-entries. The very reason Ship 38's test mattered so much. When people saw those brown stains, many thought it was damage. But to SpaceX, it was a milestone. That thin oxidation layer is what tells engineers, this works. The structure held. The design can be pushed further. It's physical proof that Starship can face plasma-level heat and remain reusable. A cornerstone for Musk's dream of routine space travel. It means that one day soon, the same Starship could go up, return, get refueled, and go again, like a commercial airplane. That's not science fiction anymore. It's visible in every scorch and streak on Ship 38's skin. What makes SpaceX's testing different is its speed of iteration. Traditional programs run hundreds of computer simulations before risking a single prototype. SpaceX just flies, gathers real plasma data, and adjusts hardware in days. This build-test-learn cycle is what allows the company to evolve faster than any government or competitor. Ship 38 gave them real-world insights into how stainless steel oxidizes, how plasma interacts with exposed hulls, and how far they can push the design before failure. These insights are now being applied to Ship 39, Ship 40, and beyond. Each one lighter, stronger, and smarter. So yes, the rust shocked everyone. But what's more shocking is what it represents. SpaceX is mastering reusability through imperfection. Now comes the question dividing the community. Should SpaceX stick with stainless steel or move to exotic alloys? Some engineers argue for super alloys like Inconel or advanced ceramics. But those materials are costly, fragile, and impossible to mass produce at SpaceX's speed. Musk's choice of 304L isn't about flash. 
It's about scalability. Making space flight affordable through simplicity. That's what people often miss. Innovation isn't always about new materials. Sometimes it's about using old materials in smarter ways. And SpaceX just proved that ordinary stainless steel can survive a trip through hell and come back with valuable data instead of debris. The brown streaks on Starship 38 aren't a flaw. They're a badge of progress. Proof that humanity is finally learning to reuse the machines that take us to space. Because sometimes innovation doesn't shine. Sometimes it rusts. The rust on Starship 38 wasn't a flaw. It was proof that SpaceX is mastering reusability through real data, not theory. This is exactly why every test matters. Each flight brings us closer to rockets that can launch, return, and fly again. Cutting costs and changing how humanity reaches space. Starship 5-3, orbital refueling, and the first tower catcher next. These breakthroughs could define the next era of human spaceflight. So what's your take? Is stainless steel truly the future of reusable rockets? Share your thoughts below. You've been watching Space Hub, where we break down real space innovations that shape our future. If you found this valuable, like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and turn on notifications so you never miss the next big leap into space.